the Sunday within the octave of ascension. And it'd be, it'd be good to be here in, uh, in Boise and Idaho here. And uh, the epistle for this uh, ascension, Sunday after the ascension within the octave, is taken from the first epistle of St. Peter, chapter 4. Dearly beloved, be prudent and watch in prayers. For before all things, have a constant mutual charity among yourselves. For charity covereth the multitude of sins. Use in hospitality one towards another without murmuring, as every man hath received grace, ministering the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the words of God. If any minister, let him do it as of the power which God administereth. That in all things God may be honored through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the gospel. We're going to say from St. John chapter 15 and 16. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, When the paraclete cometh, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth that proceedeth from the Father, you should give testimony of me. And you, you should give testimony because you are with me from the beginning. These things have I spoken to you, that you may not be scandalized. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the hour cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he hath death of service to God. And these things will they do to you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the hour shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. That's where it was with today's Holy Gospel. Amen. Today, St. Augustine says, when our Lord speaks, he does not say to the apostles, the Holy Ghost is coming to you, or the Holy Spirit is coming to you. We just say always in English, the Holy Ghost. But he says, the Holy Ghost is coming to you. He doesn't say the Holy Ghost is coming to you, but he rather says, the Spirit of Truth. And why does he say that? Because the Holy Ghost is God, the third person of the Blessed Trinity. But the third person of the Blessed Trinity, He is always per perfect in he is charity, He is fire, He is the Spirit of truth. And that the Holy Ghost is always God, the Holy Ghost is with the Father and the Holy and the Son. But he, when our Lord says, the Spirit of truth shall come to you, He says, therefore, that the Holy Ghost is going to come inside of us who are members of Him. And he is going to manifest himself in our spirit. So the Holy Ghost is going to come inside of us. And he is going to manifest himself with our spirit. Just like God the Son, he is God. And he is one word. God is the word. He is, there is the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And there is only one word. But when God became man, and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, like St. John says, he spoke in many words, and not just one word. He is only one word. But he divided his word up into many words, which we call the 12 articles of the creed, which we call the articles of our faith, and every word that spoke from God, from Jesus Christ, it is an expression of a piece of that one word. So that when he became man, he, he, he allowed his divine word to be expressed in human words. He willed that his divine word be spoken in human words. He wanted human flesh to carry his word. So when the Holy Ghost comes to us in the Roman Catholic Church, he is the divine life of our church. And he is the, we call the sanctifying grace, the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Of course, the Father is also inside of me. The Son is also inside of me. All three persons are inside of me when I am in the state of sanctifying grace. But we call it the, we call it the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Because even though all three persons are inside of us, it's the Holy Ghost that shall manifest himself. And his spirit must come out in us. And then St. Augustine says, he spent these three and a half years preparing his apostles. And he breathed upon them and sent them the Holy Ghost. And he says, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. But who does the Son send? The Father and the Son send only one. And that is the Holy Breath, the Holy Ghost. He is the one that is sent by the Father and the Son. And he is called by us in human flesh the Spirit of Truth. When we say the Spirit of Truth, 
because it is it is it is not the Holy Ghost communicating directly and immediately inside of our church, but the Holy Ghost communicates through human, just like the Father, uh, the, 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 the the Father spoke to the prophets, and the prophets heard the word of the Father, and they repeated it to men in the Old Testament, and the Son entered into human flesh. And the Son spoke the words to his apostles. He laid his hands upon the apostles. He made them bishops and priests of the church. He commanded them to go out and carry his gospel to the ends of the earth. So therefore, the Holy Ghost must do the same thing. As the Father expresses himself in human flesh, and the Son expresses himself in human flesh, so the Holy Ghost will also express himself in human flesh. You must have the Spirit of Truth. And the Spirit of Truth is what we must carry from Pentecost Sunday. We're now in that day of the Novena, the days of the Novena between Ascension Thursday, a few days ago, and Pentecost Sunday, when the Holy Ghost descends upon the apostles of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And the apostles become filled with the Holy Ghost, and they receive the gift of tongues, and they're able to speak in all languages. And every language is going to be able to hear them and understand them. God is going to make himself able to be understood in every language. And he is going to make himself sent to the uttermost ends of the earth. The spirit of truth must be inside of us. One of the great mistakes that we often make as Catholics is that we all we must say is, as long as you have the truth. Yes, many have the truth. The Pharisees had the truth, but they didn't have the spirit of truth. The Sadducees neither had the truth nor the spirit of truth. But the Pharisees had the truth. They were not heretics. But they didn't have the spirit of truth. They were filled with a great bitterness, with a great anger, with a great pride, with a great hypocrisy. And hence they did not express the truth in a way that gives life. Because the Holy Ghost is not just the... He is the spirit of truth. That is, he's the wind. He is the breath. But a breath comes from a source. And the source is the word. The word speaks and the word travels by way of air. The word travels by way of breath. How does the word get to us? Through the spirit. The word gets to us through the breath of the ghost. The Holy Ghost. The word gets to us through the breath. And the breath carries that word to the ends of the earth. Now, the only time you can't do that, now you can't do that because you've got a stupid mask. We're wearing a mask with this <laughs> stupid coronavirus. Now they're wearing a mask so that the breath that gets stuck on the inside comes back inside yourself and you die of carbon dioxide poisoning. <laughs> the fact is that we are supposed to breathe out when we don't breathe in, we breathe out. We're supposed to breathe that out and send it into the world and send it to the ends of the earth. Hence, St. Augustine says, Notice that our Lord Jesus Christ, even though he is the Son, he will not speak to the apostles and say, I will send you the Holy Ghost. But rather, he tells his disciples, those 12 apostles who are to be priests, I will send you the Spirit of Truth. And this Spirit of Truth has to be inside of you. He also remember what he said earlier on. He who hears you, hears me. He who despises you, despises me. And so our Lord put a certain power into his holy priesthood, and this power is the great power of the Holy Ghost. You should always say it in his Holy Ghost and not Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost, which is the breath, the breath of the Father and the Son, the life of the Father and the Son, the heat and fire of the Father and the Son. This is what the Holy Ghost is. But the ghost is not by itself. The ghost comes forth from the word. The ghost comes forth. The ghost expresses truth. And the ghost must be inside of me. It must be inside of you. And hence there must be this Holy Ghost inside. And then our Lord is going to tell his apostles what's going to happen if that Holy Ghost is inside of you. He tells his apostles. When the paraclete, and what does paraclete mean? Consoler. Remember, our Holy Ghost is not just a wind. He is a consoling wind. He is not just a breath. He is a breath that came from the mouth of the Father and the Son. And it is the breath of the Word. And what did Jesus Christ say? I am the truth. So the Holy Ghost is the consoling warm wind, the consoling breath that warms that which is cold and bends that was all the things it says in the beautiful uh, uh, the hymn of Pentecost Sunday, uh, recte uh, quodest uh, devium, R R make right what is make make right that which is crooked, a uh, warm that which is cold, bend that which is uh, straighten that which is crooked, and so on. The beautiful hymns of the of of of, of uh, Pentecost Sunday, in the Mass of Pentecost. 
All these things the breath does. The breath sends a warm and correct. And the breath is an expression of the truth. But where does this breath, how does this breath manifest itself? And St. Augustine says, it is inside of the bishops and priests of the church. A world that does not have priests preaching the word of God with the spirit of truth. And a world that does not have bishops that preach the word of God with the spirit of truth. This world is necessarily a world of lies. But it's also necessarily a cold world. It is a world of coldness. It is a world which lacks charity. It is a world that lacks any kind of warmth. It is a world that is becoming frigid and frozen. We see this happen in our world today. It is being frozen by foolish laws. I went ahead and did a check earlier today. It was a great scandal. Hope you're all seated down. <laughs> I was in a gas station in, in, uh, here in, uh, what are this place is called? Yeah. Uh, in Idaho. Right? Not, not in Payette, in, in, in Idaho. I was in a gas station, and it said, keep distance six feet. And right next to it, about 13 inches away, and there was another one that says, stand here, social distance, six feet. So I guess Idaho in math is not the best. <laughs> and then I went back, went back, and there was another one back, and it was only about five feet to the one behind, and about 18 inches to the one on the side, and it says, stand here, that way you'll be six feet away. <laughs> So they, they, they put their little, well, they, we're going to have to stand on this circle, then you got to move to the next circle, then you got to move to the next circle. It's like we teach on, on Good Friday when we, do the, when we do the, when we take off our shoes. Only the priests do it and the clergy and the servers. We always tell them, we go to the back of the church, you genuflect, then the priest comes forward to the middle, and you walk behind them and you don't get any closer. You stay four pews behind then he genuflects and you genuflect in the same spot. You stay four pews behind. So now the liturgy is inside of the gas station. And the liturgy is inside of all the places around us. You have to keep a liturgical distance when you go inside of the gas station to buy your Coca-Cola and your Diet Pepsi and your Coke Zero. You have to make sure that you keep a right distance. And whatever you do, don't breathe on anybody. <laughs> now, when you breathe on someone, what is we human beings are supposed to be about breath? We have without when when you, when you when someone's dead, you take a mirror, you stick it on his on his mouth, and if the mirror doesn't fog up, that means it's burial time. <laughs> the fact is that human beings are supposed to have breath, and now we're trying to take away the breath. This is not my accident. It is Satan at work, mm -hmm. and people are accepting it because they are already dead. They are already dead. Remember when St. When John Bosco had a vision, one of his many visions about hell, his dreams, and he saw his boys running down into hell and falling into hell. And he said, that boy, I just talked to it just after, just after night prayers, and this boy just went to bed. That boy died a month ago. That boy died last year. But this boy is still alive, and that boy is still alive. And that boy, did they all die this night? The angel said, they have all been dead for a long time. They're already dead. St. John Bosco, standing before his boys, the great saint, preaching to his boys of faith, and they were dead. They don't have whoever is dead has no breath. He has no life. And those who have not breath in life, they are cold. And the coldness is throughout our world. You're standing too close to me. One of the TSA agents was complaining to me about it when I was going through the, uh, through the, through the security. He said, yeah, they're saying, you're too close, you're too close. They're fed up with it. They're fed up with it. We are in a world that is cold and dead. And all that's happening with this coronavirus, all that's happening is that the manifestation of the death that is already in us is being shown forth. That's all. That's true. Nothing new has happened. It's just the exposure of the disease, the exposure of the cancer, the exposure of the wickedness. Now, what is the answer? The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth is the only answer. And our Lord Jesus Christ says to his apostles before he goes to his death, but the, the paraclete, the consoler, is going to come. I will send him to you from the Father. The fa Remember, because our Lord Jesus Christ never sends alone. A dogma of our holy church. The Holy Ghost proceedeth from the Father and the Son. This passage is against the Orthodox. The Orthodox heretics who claim that the Holy Ghost does not proceed from the Son, but only the Father. But no, the, this Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father and the Son. And here is one of the passages of Scripture which says this. 
When the paraclete cometh, whom I will send to you from the Father. That is, this comes from the Father and the Son. He proceedeth from the Father. He will give testimony of me. And you, and, and you shall give testimony because you are with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken to you, that you may not be scandalized, for they will put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the hour cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doth a service to God. And here St. Augustine says, this does not apply to the enemies of God who belong to false religions. Because everyone that belongs to a false religion says, I believe that the god Baal, and that the god Buddha, that whatever, whatever, whatever devil they worship is, tells me that I must put you to death. These are devils, and Christ never calls devils God. He says, there will come a time when they will put you out of the synagogues, they will even kill you, thinking that they do a service to God. This refers only to Jews at this time, in the time of Christ, because they are the true religion, and it refers to Catholics now, because we are the true religion. And this non-Catholics cannot kill you thinking to do a service to God. Non-Catholics are doing a service to the devil. In the time of Christ, 2,000 years ago, non-Jews were doing a service to the devil. So the time will come, he says, you are going to be kicked out of the synagogues by your fellow Catholics. You're going to be, they're going to say, kill you, thinking to do a service to God. One example of this is a priest, I forget his name, in 1988, in Belgium, somewhere in Northern Europe, who said, I pray to God that Archers of Lefebvre die before June of 88. Because he's going to consecrate four bishops against the will of the Pope. And join me in a 54-day novena. Rosary novena, that's always a good thing. Join me in a novena. Join me in prayer. And we're going to pray that this schism does not happen in the church. That Archers of Lefebvre is going to ordain four visions without permission. We must pray to God that he die before this terrible thing happens. He did not pray to Lucifer. He did not pray to the Protestant God. He didn't pray to the God of the Muslims. He didn't pray to the God of the Hindus. He prayed to the true God. And he thought he was doing a service. Before June 30th, 1988, he died. Archbishop Lefebvre was still alive on that day and consecrated four bishops. Now that priest may not have lost his soul. God allowed him to die in order to show that he was wrong. And that the world might know that he was wrong. Who has eyes to see. He, 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 but he did try to kill Marshal de Lefebvre, because he was doing a service to God. He was good intentioned. He was not wicked. He wasn't like Pope Francis. He wasn't like the wicked bishops of the church. He was a good man. Now the time will come when the good people will say, we have to excommunicate you. And my dad used to always say to me, son, this hurts me more than it hurts you. <laughs> Whack, whack, whack. Right? But the fact is that what is, why are they doing these things? Because they think it does a service to God. Now the fact we must remember that these people will these do not be scandalized when you see these things. You'll see good men. Some of them genuinely good, other ones wicked and apparently good, and only God knows which one is which. It's not for us to judge. But there will be souls who will say, I'm sorry, but you're excommunicated. I'm sorry, but you're in schism. I'm sorry, but you're a walking scandal. I'm sorry, but you have to be removed because you're a great scandal. I wanted to go to the Society of St. Pius X, but you're excommunicated. And we have to throw you on the ditch. And we have, to, ex and we have to, to put you to death because we must do a service to God. The time will come when they will cast you out of the synagogue. They will put you out of the synagogues. The hour cometh, and whosoever shall kill you, killeth you, will think of the service of God. And these things they will do to you, and Christ will explain why. These things they will do to you, because they have not known the Father, nor me. Why do these things happen? They have not known the Father, nor me. How do we know the Father? How do we know Jesus Christ? You know that the way in which we communicate one with another is air. If you take away the oxygen, we can make lots of noise. Like move my mouth a thousand times, say a million words, but not one will travel. Only the air carries the words from myself to you into your ears and your words from yourself to me. 
This heir is the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of truth. And those who do not have the Spirit of truth, they will lose the truth. We must understand in our times, even if today I believe in all 12 articles of the Creed, even if today I believe in all the truths of our Holy Roman Catholic Church and I deny all heresies, do I necessarily have the full truth inside of me? Maybe not. For the full truth is alive. The full truth is filled with air. The full truth is a spirit that goes inside of it. There is rubber of the balloon. There is rubber of the tire. But without the air inside the balloon, it can't fly very well. And without air inside the tire, it is useless. There must be a spirit inside the rubber. There must be rubber, but there must be a spirit inside the rubber. And the spirit is so delicate that the smallest hole, and it will leak out. So we must make sure that the spirit of truth does not leak out of us. And what is the spirit of truth? And this spirit of truth is called charity by St. Paul in the epistle. It is the, what is, or St. Peter in the epistle. What is the spirit of truth? It is charity which covereth a multitude of sins. Be prudent, dearly beloved, and watch in prayer. So before all things, have a constant mutual charity among yourselves. For charity covereth a multitude of sins. Use in hospitality one towards another without murmuring. You know, if someone puts a gun to your head and says, give me a cup of coffee, you smile and give him a cup of coffee. When he walks away, you say, man, he was, I was so happy to give him a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's very possible that he walks away, you might murmur. And therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ says, do the work of charity without murmuring. Like St. John, the almsgiver, St. John was once robbed. And he said, the thief said, give me all your money. And he pulled all his money out and gave it to him. The thief walked away. He reached into his coat and realized there was a cord, there was a coin still there. So he ran after the thief. He ran after him because the thief had been away for some minutes. He ran and ran and ran and said, I, I, I left something out. I didn't give you all. Here's the other penny. Here's the other coin. That was St. John the almsgiver. And then the thieves, realizing the innocence and holiness of St. John, they wept and they gave him back all his money. But the fact is, he felt so terrible. He says, I lied. I, said, I thought I gave all my money, but I didn't. There was still a quarter left. And he ran after them. Now, it is not enough that we give to those, do good to those that hate us. We must love to do good to those that hate us. This is the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth is supposed to be inside of us. What was in the heart of St. Stephen, the very first martyr, while he was being martyred? Not after he'd been in heaven for 15 years and got over the wounds. Those, those stones really hurt. And I got, a, got, I got the healing program. I'm fine now. I forgive you. <laughs> he didn't do that. It was at the moment in which he was being stoned, at the moment that they were cursing him, he said, Lord, lay not this sin up to their charge. And the Lord heard his prayer. And the most wicked of them was Saul of Tarsus. And the Lord converted Saul of Tarsus, and he became St. Paul. And St. Paul is only St. Paul, the greatest of all of the apostles, greater than the other twelve, and the greatest of all of the preachers of the Holy Word of God of all time. And how did he come to us? Because St. Stephen said, Lay not this sin to his charge. At the moment he was being stoned. So they're going to come and kill us. i got 16 machine guns. We got little landmines out there. Go to the right. <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe that's one response. <laughs> that's a common response, isn't it? What about our ancestors? What about our ancestors? How did they respond? They gave themselves over as lambs to the slaughter. That's what they did. And they conquered their enemies. St. Ignatius of Rome. St. Ignatius, uh, he was terrified of Antioch. St. Ignatius was terrified that the lions would not eat him because so many of the Christians were thrown into the Colosseum and the lions didn't eat them. And he said, I don't want those kind of lions. Lord, send me lions that will devour me instantly because I want to be devoured for Christ. And the lions came and ate him. And they heard his prayer as he knelt in the Colosseum. What is the spirit of truth? This spirit is a very powerful and beautiful spirit, and it will, it will guide us in what to do in the time of battle. But the spirit of truth, the spirit of charity, this is not to say there's never a time to fight. 
When a man of charity fights, those who are against him should not be in the battlefield because they have no chance. But if we are not men of charity, we will never know when to fight. We will never know how to fight. The spirit of truth must be in us. The spirit of truth cannot be defeated. The spirit of truth is, must be that which is inside of us. And therefore our Lord says, the time will come when the good Catholics, or at least apparently good Catholics, they are going to kill you. Why will they kill you? Because they know not the Father nor me. All they know are rules and regulations. One of the common elements of those that are persecuting the Catholics is they know the rules and regulations. It's the regulations. I was getting off the plane a few last week. Didn't have my mask on, of course. I was walking out of the plane, and the steward, the stewardess left me alone, no problem. And a few other people that were doing the same thing. But some passenger said, where's your mask? I said, well, it's not good for you. Okay. Goes, but the regulations, the regulations. Now, the fact is, everyone knows the regulations. We do not follow regulations. We follow the Spirit. We follow Christ. And the regulations but will happen the time when they will come and kill you, thinking they do a service to God. Follow the regulations. Because after all, Archbishop Lefebvre consecrated four bishops to save the Catholic Church. He consecrated four bishops to save the Catholic priesthood. He consecrated four bishops to save countless numbers of souls. He consecrated four bishops to preserve the Holy Roman Catholic faith. But he didn't get a piece of paper. He didn't follow all the regulations. He didn't get a piece of paper that said it was approved by John Paul the Great. He didn't get the approval. But the fact is, as it says in Acts chapter 5, and St. Thomas Aquinas preached 800 years ago, reminding us of Acts chapter 5, should we obey all commands of a superior? And St. Thomas says, no. You should not obey all commands of a superior. For when a superior goes against God, you must disobey him. As it says in Acts chapter 5, we obey God rather than men. We do wish to obey men because we recognize that they are representatives of God. And as far as we can, we always obey men. But if those men go directly against God, if they use their power against God, then we disobey them. Because we obey God rather than men. And this means we must understand not the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. This is the spirit of truth. For he who lives by the letter, he shall be killed. For the letter killeth, says our Lord Jesus Christ in his very first sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. But the spirit quickeneth. The spirit giveth life. The spirit 